it's kind of hard to believe I'm sitting here right now uh, on the eve of entering our new facility. And it was about five years ago that we began praying and thinking that uh, it was time to have a facility to expand ministry. And uh, we began to pray and began to look and God brought us an opportunity with St. Maurice and for a lot of reasons that uh, fell through. And because I'm the chaplain with the police department, I've ride along a lot with uh, the officers and I think I know every church building in Livonia. And in doing so, we began to compile churches that frankly we didn't think were preaching God's word. And over the last five years, we began to target on uh, certain facilities and even though the churches were in rough shape, they weren't ready to close their doors. Well, last January, in fact, January, 4, January 2014, we had an attorney uh, send out 10 letters to 10 separate churches in the area. And to our surprise, we got four responses. And out of those four responses, uh, it was the Congregation of Faith Lutheran that seemed to be serious. Uh, one of my big concerns was I knew they were going to have to have a congregational vote. So it took an entire year, three congregational votes, and each vote was encouraging, but I kept reminding myself and our people that, uh, hey, uh, congregations are funny. Uh, first vote was good, second vote was good, then we, our hopes began to soar. And then uh, we got word in late fall that, okay, they're ready for the offer. Well, we had the offer on the table in the middle of the year. And then finally they, they came back and said, they basically accepted our offer intact. And we had a few dealings with them on small issues. But we closed the end of November. And as you know, we've spent the last two months trying to put the building uh, together. It's been exciting. I think the thing that really has moved me is the the body and how it's functioned. There's been men and women that have had giftedness that have just expressed it. Most of what you're going to see in the building, we've done. And then God's brought us some very gifted contractors also. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. I'm excited. But as I think about the building and all that's entailed, there's sometimes it's overwhelming and sometimes the building can be the focus. But in reality, that's not what it's about at all. I see what God's given us and my mind now is just beginning to, to think about how can we use this facility. You've all heard me talk about sports and how sports uh, can rob the family of really coming to church, and that uh, many of our families pursue that. And I understand the place for it. But as I was thinking about that and talking to Dan, I would love to run a basketball league in the fall and winter. A, a short league, nominal cost, Reach out to families that don't have that kind of money. Can you imagine having a floor hockey league? We've discovered something with our families. If we can reach the kids, we typically get the families. It may take six months, 18 months, but families will come. And the exciting part is those families that are coming have little to no church background. So the gymnasium is a great opportunity. Uh, we do a lot of outreaches. I'd love to invite the community to one of our carnivals, uh, barbecue. Again, a continued opportunity for people in the neighborhood who would never set foot in a church might come for a carnival, might come for uh, a, one of the shows we put on. No longer do we have to go hat in hand and say, is the building available? No longer are we confined to, uh, hey, we have to be out of here by eight o'clock. Hey, who's gonna set the building up? What's gonna happen? No, we've got the building you can dream with me. What are the ideas that you have? What are some of the visions God's given you to reach people in the community? Because that's what the building's about, is just it's another tool uh, to reach people with the gospel message. That's all it is.
have been praying for this building for a long time. We've, we've wanted a building. And we have prayed many times at our Wednesday night prayer meeting that if, if God did give us a building, that he would do it in such a way that he would make it incredibly obvious that it was from him. It wasn't something that we had to manipulate or, or uh, uh, use angles to get, uh, that everything would, be, uh, would, would fall in line. And as I look back over the last few months, uh, that, that really is what has happened. Uh, the building is just in the right location for us. It's the right size. Uh, the price was right. And then to see the amount of uh, talent and volunteers that have come out of Bell Creek to, to put the building together, it's obvious that God's hand has been in this. And that is such a relief because that's exactly what we wanted. We didn't want to be the ones controlling this. We wanted to be this to be of the Lord. And uh, that was born out of prayer. And that really is one of the main things I love about Bell Creek is that we are a church that consciously depends on the Lord through prayer. And our prayer meeting started at uh, Corrado Park, our, our first corporate prayer meeting. Uh, I think the very first prayer meeting was Joel. I think Joel showed up and then I was late. I think eventually I showed up and it was just uh, just the two of us. Then maybe the next one, I think maybe we had uh, two or three more people. And eventually we got to the point where we had about six people consistently. And now we can pretty much count on at least 30 people each Wednesday night. And that's where we, we really depend on God for the needs of the church. And that's where, the, what this, that's where this building came from, was, was from prayer. And uh, because we recognize God is the one who's given us this building. He, and that means he has a purpose and a plan for this building. It's, Paul says in the book of Acts that in, in, in him, in God, we live and move and have our being. And Paul says that we have been placed, or he says that all men have been placed in certain places at certain times for a purpose, God's purpose. And God's purpose is that wherever we're placed, that uh, us and the people around us should know him. It's not an accident that this church is here. God wants this church here where it is in the middle of these neighborhoods in Livonia so that we and the surrounding neighborhoods can know him. And so that's really what we're going to be about. We're going to be about growing people, growing Christians who are here in depth of the Lord. But then we are not going to become a holy huddle and just serve ourselves. We are going to be reaching out to the community. And we're going to be doing that in several ways. Um, first of all, we're going to be meeting physical needs of the community. We do a program called Boxes of Love where we feed needy families. This year we gave 300 boxes of love to um, uh, Christmas dinners uh, to uh, needy families uh, within our community. And then throughout the year, if a family comes along and someone has a need, if we can, we are glad to serve that need. We do, we do physical needs. Uh, we do counseling needs. There's a lot of emotional issues that people face. We welcome people from the community. Uh, marital issues, all kinds, every, everything that a human being would face, we are glad to um, address because that's what God does. He, he ministers to people. And, uh, but at the center of all those things, the, uh, meeting the physical needs of the community, um, the counseling needs, we want Jesus Christ to be at the center of the gospel. These are all avenues that we hope to lift up Jesus Christ to the, the houses, the people in our neighborhoods, lift him up to them so that they can see what a wonderful Savior that he is and that God wants to know them. He wants to have a relationship with them and that he has the answers for the biggest problems they're facing. The biggest problem that every human being is facing is what to do about their sin. And Jesus has the answer for that. And then he also has the answers for how to have um, a marriage that would work if we'll follow his principles, how to raise our kids, how to be a single person, how to be a single parent, um, how to uh, deal and cope with the trials and sufferings in life. Jesus wants to address all of those things. And so now that we have a church building, we are very excited um, to, to have a base to operate from in the city and in the neighborhoods to lift him up and see people drawn to him.
as the youth pastor here at Bell Creek, uh, we have three main things we uh, focus on uh, for our youth ministry, and it's know, grow, and show. So the main thing is we want kids to know Christ, first of all, just to come and know him, to have a relationship with him. Uh, this is everlasting life, that you know me and the Father, is what Jesus says. So we want to offer an opportunity for our students to come to know Jesus as Savior. Not only do we want them to come to know him as Savior, but we also want them to know about him. Uh, we want to, our youth ministry in middle school and high school to be a chance for kids to come to know more about who this Savior is and his love for them. And so in knowing God and knowing about God, that naturally results in that they grow in their faith. So they know God, they know his love for him, and they grow in that. And the natural result of growing is then they show their faith to others. So they show the love of God to others as they experience it, as they know it, and they understand it. And so this building is huge for that uh, because we're going to have a great youth room for kids to come and hang out in, a uh, safe place for them to have as their own uh, little room to hang out in and uh, talk about all things that matter for uh, middle school or high school students. Um, and in that, that room will be great for our meetings. Uh, it'll be great for our second Sunday Bible study during church. It'll be great for our small groups. It'll be great for our PT groups, which are high school and middle school kids, um, mentoring uh, and learning what discipleship is. It's a great chance for them to understand what it means to show the love of God to a middle school student, to have a high school student come alongside and walk with them. So this building is great for that, just for our youth ministry, but also it's great for any of the outreach that we're going to do. Uh, to reach out to Stevenson High School, which is not far away, we still have great ties to Franklin High School uh, and students there uh, and all your other middle schools that are around here. And we still have a ton of students that are at Churchill uh, and to get them connected and invite them to whatever events we have here, whatever opportunities we have here uh, for good um, welcoming events for outsiders, but also just our typical Wednesday or Sunday night is a great opportunity for kids to come, to get to know us, to get to know uh, and have an enjoyable time uh, and hangouts and find that church isn't boring, but it's a place that's fun and exciting because the Bible says, uh, at God's right hand are pleasures forevermore. And so we're not shy about having fun because we say God's the creator of fun. We're going to have fun here. Um, and we also want you to know in that we care about you. And as we care about you, we're going to earn the right for you to hear about God's unbelievable love for you in Jesus. And so this building is great because kids can know, grow, and show in God's love for them. And then when they're showing God's love, the great thing is we're equipping our students to show God's love to others and inviting them to be a part of that in this building. That they can bring kids in, invite them to our youth group, and in that we'll do a great job of showing God's love to the community and helping our kids grow up in their faith as well.